Hello, everyone. <laughs> Hello, CPAC. It is great to be here, and RC, Maxwell, it's good to see you too. <laughs> um, uh, I have, you know, I wrote a, I wrote a, a speech but I'm, I'm not gonna read from a piece of paper. I'm just gonna speak from the heart. How does that sound? Um, so I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do here in the next 10 minutes is I'm gonna tell you a little story about, uh, about Pfizer. And, and then I'm going to, and then I'm gonna make a major announcement. So, so here we go. Let's start with the Pfizer story, shall we? <laughs> um, probably one of the biggest stories uh, I was ever involved in, just about a month ago, exposing this pharmaceutical company. We've exposed a lot of things over the years, haven't we, RC? Um, Google, Facebook, I see Davis is sitting at CNN, <laughs> Jeff Zucker, Twitter, the FBI. Um, but then I was seeing, I saw Dr. Malone backstage, I said hello to him, and uh, we, de we decided to expose this organization, uh, which was quite, quite a story actually, and you know, I've never, taken, I've never taken advertising dollars. No one's ever told me what to do, no one's ever told me what not to do. So it, it's really been kind of a journey to expose anybody who needs to be exposed, because that's what journalism is supposed to do, show you the facts without fear or favor, as they say. So I have this little mashup. I know you've seen it, but it's, it's kind of funny because, you know, I, I've never been brought to you by anyone. Sort of like these people, brought, brought, brought to you by Pfizer. Brought to you by Pfizer. Let's take a look at this. Brought to you by Pfizer. You see it, you see it every day on the TV screens there. 360. Brought to you by Pfizer. ABC News Nightline. Brought to you by Pfizer. Making a difference. Brought to you by Pfizer. CNN Tonight. Brought to you by Pfizer. This week with George Stephanopoulos is brought to you by Pfizer. You get the idea. So, so about a month ago, I did a story. A guy at Pfizer. Now, there are some brave people that have exposed this. A couple people in particular who have been nameless and faceless, but incredibly brave people I've had the pleasure to work with. And I am so grateful for those people. It, courage is, courage, was it Chesterton who wrote, courage is the virtue that sustains all others. And without that, you really can't do journalism. You really can't do anything important. But this story was significant. It, it was exposing this guy, there he's sitting there at Pfizer and he was talking about, uh, mutating the virus, talking about how people don't need to know what we're doing there at the company. And it got some 50 million views on online. And I decided to have a conversation with him. Now this is the fa my favorite thing to do, by the way, is to confront the bad guys. I actually love doing that. Remember, remember to, to, to catch a predator? So, to catch a pharmaceutical executive. So. We go to this restaurant, and again, very quick story, and then I'll make a major announcement. We go to this restaurant in Brooklyn, New York, in the Dumbo section of Brooklyn, and I walk in to say hello to this guy. Hey there. Is this seat taken? What? Hi. Um, you work for Pfizer. My question for you is, why does Pfizer want to hide from the public the fact that they're mutating the COVID viruses. Is this real life? This is absurd. Why does Pfizer want to hide from the public that they're mutating the COVID virus? Oh my God. You're on video. You're on video. Pfizer ultimately is thinking about mutating the COVID like, virus. I'm here. So he's shocked. He's, he's amazed. You know, this is happening. Now, what's interesting, of all the restaurants in New York City, I picked maybe the one in Brooklyn where I could get a shot like that. Um, and, and it is kind of a spiritual war, a fight of good and evil that we're fighting, right and wrong, good and evil. 
Um, you could say light versus darkness. So this goes on. This is one of the most riveting and bizarre things you'll ever see in your life. Many of you have seen it, but I'll just play a few more clips. Bro, first of all, I'm literally a yeah. liar. So his response is, I'm literally a liar. But I expect you to believe what I'm saying right now. It goes on, it gets weirder. I'm not even a scientist by background. You know what that I came from a consulting firm right. that does business. Uh, this please, is please, absurd. Please don't touch me. This is absurd. This so is absurd. At a certain point, he starts filming the restaurant owner. I don't know why he was doing that. Can I talk to you, please, about this video? Okay, so there's one, two, three, four, five white people. Why would you bring race into this? Talks about how there's white people in the restaurant. And again, it looks, kind of looks like a sitcom. It's bizarre. That's why I call it cinema verite. Sometimes truth is stranger than fiction. <laughs> but this goes on. He starts getting violent. He starts getting aggressive, caught. You know, these people are caught. There's no way out. He wants the cops here, but he doesn't want me to leave. So I'm in a little bit of a predicament because she's asking me to leave, but he doesn't want me to leave. So what should we do? So he, he locks me in the restaurant. They lock me, which I may be false imprisonment, who knows. She, he's filming the restaurant owner, right? Filming the restaurant owner and things are going on. Get the light off the door. Please unlock the door. Please unlock the door. Please unlock the door. Unlock the door. Unlock the door. Unlock the door. This is a pharmaceutical executive. A doctor. <laughs> These are the people making these decisions in our society. Things get even crazier. We're trying to get to the, unlock the door. Unlock the door. And and I just finally they unlock the doors. I walk out of the restaurant. One of my colleagues, very brave people, faceless, nameless people, is so passionate to expose this. I have to sort of drag her out of the restaurant. We're, like we're in this. New York City. This is remarkable. Um, I mean. These are the sorts of people I work with. She's like, she's like, let me go back in there. <laughs> so I'm, I'm running down the street. The cops are coming. They all, you know, I'm worried they're going to destroy our footage. Luckily, we escape. Let me fast forward. By the way, he jumps in front of the vehicle to try to prevent us from leaving. OK. So this all happens, most watched video in, in, in history of Veritas. Now, what was the name of the radio broadcaster? Uh, now you, you're going to find out the rest of the story, yes? What was his name? Paul Harvey. Paul Harvey. And now, ladies and gentlemen, for the rest of the story. Ready? You ready for this? Fasten your seatbelts. In order to obtain these things, we need brave people. We need brave whistleblowers. We need people on the inside. There were people on the inside of Pfizer who helped us obtain this. <laughs> to be a whistleblower is to step outside the great chain of being, to, to basically be disconnected from the mother ship. That's sort of like how I feel right now. <laughs> but I've learned a lot of things over the last month. Um, having been ousted from the company I founded 13 years ago, mere days after the story. And as this was happening, I was talking to one of these people. And she was a little reluctant to go public, rightfully so. She was scared. It didn't, it didn't feel right. But after what I went through, we reconnected. The individual who helped identify this man, who helped bring this to light, the person who worked with Pfizer, who was targeted, who was brought into a room, interrogated, who had a red van go to her home, harass her and her loved ones, who was scared for her life, rightfully so, scared for her life, was so inspired by the series of events that have occurred over the last three weeks that she's decided to go public with me on the stage right now. And her name is Debbie. Debbie from Pfizer, would you please come out here?
Thank you. I love you guys, too. <laughs> well, like James said, I was a little reluctant to come at first. I was scared for my life. I was worried that I would end up in a body bag or in a car accident. But um, I realized that the spirit of fear is not from the Lord. And as a believer, I knew that I couldn't just sit there. I couldn't just sit there and watch people get lied to. People get gaslit. It made me angry. And I talked to James, and um, he you know, gave me the courage to come up here. And I'm so thankful you know, to have people here who are willing to listen and who are willing to stand up. And I think we all need to learn to not be fearful. Fear is how the enemy controls us. The reason why our country is going the way it's going is because of fear. People are willing to give up their freedom and their liberty to feel safe. We can't do that. Freedom is not free. Freedom comes with the price. And sometimes people, like me, have to make a sacrifice. I just want to tell all the people here in this room who are employed, if you guys work for big tech, the media, a government agency, it's your responsibility to stand up. Do not let these people keep getting away with this. If you don't say something, they're going to keep doing it. That's why we're where we are today. That's why they keep doing it. That's why they keep lying to you. That's why they keep gaslighting you. Stand up. Be brave. Do something for this country, or else we're all doomed. Thank you. Thank you. I will tell you all that I'm not stopping. We're not giving up. O'Keefe tips at protonmail.com. And stay tuned. <laughs>